Hello everyone, today we're going to work with the program uh, Simple GTO Trainer. I introduced you before to the MTT pack by Via, where he implemented uh, his own ranges into the program. And now there's a new package called uh, Ultimate MTT pack by Via, and we worked with the GTO MTT pack uh, by Via, which is based on the program uh, Simple Preflop. So we have two programs, Simple Preflop, where we work uh, with the situations before the flop, and simple post flop where we analyze everything that happens after. And here we basically have uh, those two programs combined. So they've calculated uh, how to play uh, correctly pre flop, uh, then they calculated uh, how to play correctly post flop, and now with all the results, so we can use this program to hopefully improve our game. I never laid my hands on this pack before, so today we're gonna explore it together. And since uh, during my last stream uh, this night I finished second uh, in the tournament uh, where I felt uh, uncomfortable playing a heads up, I want to work um, uh, specifically on that. So let's work on my uh, heads up game. Okay. Okay, here we limped preflop, our opponent checked, uh, so he basically has any two cards, um, except for those uh, that he would use to ice race. And by the way, we can click here and see his actual range. As you can see, uh, the hands are weighted, uh, so it means uh, that uh, some of the hands he will use uh, more often, uh, some of them uh, less often. For example, 3-2 offsuit he checks 98% of the time. And all the pocket pairs, uh, all the good aces, all the big cards uh, he basically never checks. So yeah, and uh, jack-4 offsuit he never raises. And if you don't know how to react to your opponent's limp, you can uh, look at this range uh, and uh, find out at least which hands you should uh, never raise. For example, 9 for offsuit, 8 for offsuit, 10 for offsuit, these all are 100% checks, so those hands are most likely not uh, profitable to raise. Meaning that uh, if you raise those hands, uh, you are probably losing money. Okay, this one is clear, I guess. Uh, let's move on. Okay, I think it's better to uh, bet here using this uh, small sizing. Okay, he folded uh, his uh, queen 3 offsuit. And then chips, I basically won around one big blind. And in EV, I uh, at least uh, didn't lose anything. And we see that this is basically the best option, a bet uh, 0.73. And the program recommend to use this bet 45% uh, of the time. And if we mouse over here on this number, we see that the uh, program recommends to check this hand uh, basically 34% uh, of the time. Most of the time 45% uh, bet uh, 0.73 and 20% of the time bet uh, 145, which is basically 3 quarters of the pot. Okay, how can we adjust and when should we use more checks or more big bets? Right here we have an opponent who is playing uh, almost perfectly. Like for example a guy who uses solvers a lot, uh, who works with solvers a lot, uh, programs like uh, Simple Post Flop, which helps you to um, improve your post flop game. So against this guy who is using optimal lines, who is not going to uh, check raise a lot, we prefer to bet small. But if our opponent is very aggressive, uh, check raising almost every time, then we prefer to check more. Okay, next hand we open limp deuce 5 suited, uh, we have a stack of 30 blinds, uh, we don't want to uh, create big pot uh, with this hand, so we limp it. What do we prefer here? I think we prefer to again bet small. I mean, what are we trying to fold out here? Uh, ace high, he would probably raise preflop, uh, at least a decent ace high hand, and we never make him fold a queen at 10 or a 3. So yeah, I think it's better to bet small. Yeah, it's good, and let's check uh, how we should play this hand uh, overall. Okay, a check only 1%, uh, bet small 79%, almost uh, 80, and bet big uh, 19%. We only want bet big uh, if you know that our opponent uh, overfolds, uh, that he can actually fold a uh, 3x hand, uh, that he can uh, fold some gut shots, then yeah, we can try to apply more pressure using bigger bet. Here we limped again, and our opponent almost never has uh, big aces or big kings, so again I like a small bet. 
This time he calls and I see no point in betting on the turn, the board is very scary and we're not gonna fold out anything. Okay, let's see if we picked the right answers. Uh, on the flop the best action is to bet small, so I was correct. And we can actually check the EV of our actions, uh, check minus 0.76, uh, bet small minus 0.66. Uh, well, I think it's better for us to look here. Because when we see negative EVs, we have to pick the smallest one, which is a little bit counterintuitive. So yeah, it's better to look here on the frequencies. And here we should pick uh, the option that uh, program uses uh, more often. That would be the most uh, profitable line. And on the turn, check is also correct, uh, so for now I'm playing uh, perfectly, according to GTO, but uh, it's only been three hands. And we take the showdown, of course we lost some chips, uh, it's very hard to win against Ace-4 in this case, but in terms of EV everything is good. We play it uh, perfectly, according to a GTO. Okay, let's move on. And again, I prefer to bet small. Actually, this board is uh, very similar to the one that we had before. Uh, it was, I, I believe, uh, Jack-10-3. Now we have uh, Jack-8-deuce. Anyway, I prefer betting small, and it's really good that we have some backdoors and a gut shot. And yes, it is correct to bet small on the flop, and now we have a really good situation on the turn. Many amateur players prefer to check in the spot because they think, well, we have a flush draw now, it is good, we want to see the river, and ace is a kind of scary, so I don't want to bet here. But actually ace is a scary card not only for us, but for our opponent as well. Because most of his ace x combos, he raises preflop, as we see here. Ace 2 he checks basically all the time, ace 3 almost all the time, but ace 4 only 50%. And the bigger the ace, the less he checks. And he also checks uh, some uh, suited aces. Of course, he wants to check uh, aces uh, to have uh, not flush draws, uh, to have ace-x combos. But uh, in the end, uh, we have more ace-x combos than he does. We limp uh, some strong ace-x hands, and he never checks them. So yeah, in the end, we have a lot of equity here. We have 9 outs for our flush. We have 4 outs for our gut shot. And we can easily represent uh, a strong hand. So we prefer to semi-bluff with this combo, and even if our opponent calls, we can still improve uh, if we are behind. And I would instantly eliminate 40% bet, I would instantly eliminate uh, check uh, as an option. And of those two that's left, uh, I personally prefer a 2.7 bet, uh, but somehow I feel that program would prefer overbet. And of course, if we overbet this strong draw, we should also overbet with some uh, strong mate hands, like a set of deuces, for example, or two pairs. I don't think that we should uh, overbet a set of jacks, because we block uh, a lot of hands that uh, he could call. But all in all, with two flush draws on the board, I think it's better to overbet uh, sets uh, than a hand like this, where we block both uh, his flush draws and his straight draws. Or maybe we should overbet, because we don't block his uh, mate hands and we can apply more pressure on his 8x and jack x combos. But at the same time, I don't think that he would fault uh, jack x with two flush draws on board. Okay, I'll pick this uh, 2.7 bet. I think that by using 2.7 uh, bet sizing and overbet, we basically get uh, the same result. We fold out uh, 8, we fold out deuce, uh, we don't uh, fold out jack uh, and hands like uh, queen 10 for example. So yeah, if the program thinks uh, that we should overbet, it's fine, but I prefer 2.7. And yeah, that's exactly what I was talking about, uh, program prefers to overbet. And not just prefers overbet, uh, but uh, strongly prefers overbet, 97% of the time, that's uh, a lot. Well, that's how my perfect run ends. And uh, in terms of EV, let's get back uh, and take a look. Let's see those EVs. EV of checking is uh, 0.28, EV of small betting 0.21, EV of uh, betting uh, 2.7 uh, 0.32, and EV of uh, over betting is uh, 0.42. So yeah, the difference is pretty big and that's why we have to almost always uh, over bet. But uh, if we think about this uh, spot, uh, to me it is basically uh, no uh, real difference between uh, the overbet and uh, bet 75. 
because if our opponent is good we will not make him fold uh, jack x uh, neither with 75% um, uh, bet uh, nor with uh, the over bet well maybe it's more profitable because uh, some weaker players would fold against an over bet with a jack and also we can fold out some weaker flush draws of course he will never fold 9-7 uh, of hearts uh, queen 10 of hearts 9-10 of hearts but anyway, we know now that overbet uh, is more profitable in this pot. And uh, you see, he bets 5 into the pot of uh, 3.65. Well, yeah, this is not a small overbet. But uh, all in all, we've played here okay, we could have played better. But this is exactly why we are using this program, to eliminate those mistakes. Well, actually, it's so cool. It's like I'm back playing heads up from the last night. So here our opponent limps, we check and he checks back on the flop. Well, usually Queen X and 9X would see bet this board uh, with some uh, small exceptions. And if we bet big here, I don't think uh, we get enough value from uh, 3X combos, so I prefer to bet uh, a half pot. Oh, actually we should check here 97% of the time. Okay, let's check EVs. Uh, my option, which is to bet uh, a half pot, is a zero EV. And the bigger bet, uh, which is basically a full pot bet, uh, is a negative EV. So I was correct about betting big, but yeah, my bet is neutral EV and uh, check is actually plus EV. Well, if we think about it, when we check, we allow our opponent to bluff. And we can catch those bluffs. And this is probably the main reason uh, behind our check. And of course, after we bet turn, we never bet river. But I want some chips, yeah. Okay, let's move on. And again, it's a great tool, but we won't be able to analyze every spot in this one video. So I probably... I probably will make a video once a week where we analyze a certain spot like small blind against button or heads up play like here. There are actually 56,000 options available. If you follow the link, and I will post this link below the video, you can read everything about the program, how it works and about all the options that are available. So yeah, you'll find everything you want to know about the program there and also you will get a 10% discount if you uh, buy the program uh, following my link. But yeah, we have a lot of content to work with. Okay, we limp here again and I like a bet but I don't really like the board. We can follow turn if we get a gut shot, uh, so uh, a 5, a 7 and a 9 would be nice. And we have an overcard, uh, probably our 6 is life. So we have some options, but no, program uh, says we should check. 42% check, 24% uh, small bet and 33% big bet. Well, if we take out the option of betting big, then program would uh, recommend us uh, to bet uh, small 57% uh, of the time. So I don't think it's a big mistake on my part. I personally prefer betting here against an opponent uh, who will uh, step aggressively after uh, we check, but uh, against an unknown uh, it is probably uh, totally fine to uh, check back if we have no reads on him. And of course on turn we just uh, give up. Okay. If he does not uh, check raise with hands like 6-3, uh, 5-6 uh, and so on, we beat them anyways and we never fold out uh, any pairs, so I prefer checking. Ok, all in all we played fine, uh, perfect turn, perfect river, but uh, we can uh, check flop instead of uh, small betting. So I think it's uh, close enough to optimal. Well, it's fun to work with this program, you don't have to lose money uh, making decisions, uh, and here I would definitely prefer a small bet. Okay, our option is a neutral in EV, but the best EV action is uh, to check. 
and it's really strange the program only checks about 30 percent of the time but it is still the best EV option we check 30 percent uh, we bet small 65 percent and we bet big only four percent okay I get it now the EV of checking and betting small is identical but the program just showed that uh, check uh, is the best uh, EV action. But in reality we played fine. Okay, we now have a gut shot on the turn and I think we should bet to fold out 3x combos, to fold out some gut shots like 4-5, uh, 5-2, uh, 4-2. But on the other hand we blocked them a little bit uh, and we're not uh, afraid of them uh, so much. Yeah, they have some equity but um, not a lot. But we still want to fold out 3x hands, we still want to fold out 10x hands, uh, so I prefer to bet uh, 75. Overbet I don't like so much because... Um, um, I don't know, we can't fold out ace-x hands, although it's not uh, so many of them. He has more 10x and 3x combos. Or maybe we can fold out queen-x combos with overbet, uh, that's an interesting one. But uh, we only have gut shot, which is bad for us. It would be much better for us if we had a gut shot and the flush draw. But probably gut shot is still enough to uh, apply some pressure. I don't know, I will go with the option that I would uh, choose uh, in the actual game. And the program again prefers to overbet. What an aggressive program, huh? The EV of my bet is minus uh, 0.88 uh, and the EV of overbetting minus 0.83. And the only two options uh, program goes with is uh, checking and overbetting. And uh, it seems like uh, my uh, bet is pointless. Well, eventually we fold out 3x hands, uh, as we can see here. But maybe programs thinks that if we invest uh, some money, if we bet 75, it is better to invest some more. And to make sure that opponent folds uh, hands like uh, Jack-10, uh, King-10, Queen-Jack, uh, Queen-King, maybe he should fold those hands uh, because uh, we will often barrel uh, on the river and he has to fold uh, those hands unimproved. Well, in my opinion, if Villain is a thinking player, he should realize uh, that uh, he will only get another barrel on the rivers that complete uh, uh, straights and flushes if we barreled on the turn with a gut shot or a flush draw, or on blank rivers if we bet uh, sets uh, on the turn. So I think with some additional equity he can call a turn with like a Queen Jack or King Queen. Yeah, he doesn't have to improve uh, to make this call uh, and he will not face a difficult decisions uh, on the river. If we bet again, he simply folds unimproved and uh, that's totally fine. Well, yeah, I am not ready to overbet the spot, uh, not being sure that our opponent will often fold uh, at 10x uh, with a gut shot uh, or a queen x uh, with a gut shot. But I really like that program shows us that we can use a mixed strategy in the spot, we can check 70% of the time, and it would be totally fine. So yeah, we either check here or bet big. Both options are totally fine. And again, we can totally adjust here to a certain opponent type. Like for example, we can bet more against uh, players that uh, often fold uh, 3x and 10x hands here. And yet the program actually uses the bet sizing that I chose uh, with a 0.085% frequency, but it strongly prefers uh, either check or overbet. Okay, let's go straight to the next hand. It is also important not only to pick options and then uh, see what program recommends, uh, if you are right or wrong, but also to think about why the program prefers one option over another. And right now I am ready to throw out some of those overbets. Here we again bet small, board is pretty static. And here I actually do like the option of overbetting, but only if we had at least a gut shot. We fold out a lot of 2x, uh, 5x hands, ace x hands, uh, a lot of gut shots, although uh, people should uh, quite often check raise with gut shots, but uh, whatever. 
It is just that uh, 10 has nothing to do with uh, deuce or a 5 and in previous hand uh, there was a queen on the turn and it surely improved uh, some of the hands. Anyway, here we basically have no equity, so I prefer checking. But if we eventually see that the program uh, still likes to bet big, uh, I would be only glad. One more aggressive move we can make uh, in the game. Yeah, actually program prefers over betting here, and I think uh, now I do understand when we should use over bets. Pretty simple logic, uh, I think. Uh, let's try to visualize our opponent's range. We can actually see his range right here. He prefers a raising with all of his strongest kings uh, preflop. Uh, in terms of uh, suited kings, it's like uh, king 8 suited plus he mostly raises, and in terms of uh, off suited kings, uh, probably king 7 plus. He only checks weak kings, and he would probably check raise uh, king deuce and king 5 on the flop with some frequency. So he will mostly have here some weaker kings, uh, some uh, deuce x 5x hands, some gut shots, uh, some ace high, queen high combos, and a lot of those hands he should fold uh, to our overbet. But I still uh, don't know uh, how much more efficient uh, the overbet uh, would be here comparing to like uh, a pot size bet or 2.7 bet, which is uh, basically 75% of the pot. Well, let's take a look at the EVs. We see that uh, the EV of betting 2.7 is minus 1.47 and the EV of betting 5 is uh, minus 1.46. So the difference is extremely small, but uh, when we lose uh, after over betting, we lose almost twice as much. So I think if we do bet here, we bet 75% uh, of the pot, because we still uh, mostly fold out uh, deuces and fives. And in terms of frequencies, we check 25% uh, of the time with this hand, and we overbet almost 67% of the time. And only 7% uh, bet uh, 2.7. All in all, whatever option we choose, either checking or betting uh, 3 quarters or overbetting, every one of them is profitable. It's just that we can use every option with some frequency. And I often get comments like, oh my god, this guy is terrible, he's saying that we should either do this or this. Why can't he pick just one option which is best? Well, that's exactly why I'm saying that we can use both options. Both options are fine, they are very similar in EVs, and we will not lose a lot of money if we prefer one over another. And when we see those frequencies, 24%, 66%, of course we can't uh, do it uh, exactly like that. We will sometimes check more, sometimes bet more, depending on the opponent, but in the end, both options are good. But if you will bet small here at like 40% frequency, it will be less profitable, because our opponent will uh, call more often with uh, deuces and fives. So our goal here is to find the most efficient options and then use them to destroy our opponents. And to apply more pressure on those turn cards uh, to eventually win more. And of course you shouldn't start uh, overbetting relentlessly if you're playing uh, lower limit games. But uh, you should start betting more aggressively on uh, those turn cards. For example, if you're not used to barreling uh, those turn cards, you could start uh, barreling uh, hands with some equity, like uh, Queen Jack, uh, maybe some flush draws, maybe some gut shots. I mean, hands that uh, have some potential to improve. And then, when you are more familiar with the situation, you can start uh, betting really aggressively and using uh, those overbets. And now, the river. By the way, if you watched my stream uh, last night, uh, you know that in this kind of spots I like to bet again uh, to gain uh, some more value from deuces and fives. Unfortunately, there's no uh, bet sizing that I prefer in this spot, uh, but uh, all in all, I don't think uh, he would call an overbet uh, with uh, deuces and fives. He would not call uh, a pot size bet uh, unless he's uh, very suspicious. And a half pot bet is what he can call with deuces or fives. But I would prefer to bet even bigger uh, to make uh, the bet look uh, bluffier. So yeah, we can play with sizes, but I think uh, half pot bet is better than a uh, full pot bet. And yeah, as you see, we got this additional value from a deuce x hand. 
So yeah, all in all we played fine, but uh, it would be better to bet on the turn. It would be more profitable. Okay guys, uh, I am actually having a great time. And it's funny that uh, if it wasn't for my uh, YouTube channel, I would probably never get a chance uh, to uh, work, to play with this program and to think about those spots, uh, to analyze uh, those spots uh, and uh, to improve my game. So this very fact that I have you guys is actually helping us both in that we are doing this together and um, improving together. And that's awesome. Here we definitely bet, uh, but we can't fold out any pair or any draw, so I would again prefer betting small. And it's good, great. And on the turn we still have uh, good equity, we have uh, 8 outs, uh, and we fold out 10s, uh, we fold out a queen x hands, uh, a bear queen x hands uh, without a draw or a second pair. So yeah, I think we should bet again, and I always bet 75 here, but I assume that uh, program would prefer over betting. And that is correct. See, we've learned something. Now I will intimidate my opponents with those over bets. And we folded out 8-4 of hearts. What? That's an interesting call on the flop. I would say that uh, almost nobody would uh, make this call on the flop. Uh, well, there are some players that uh, call uh, almost everything. But uh, all in all, naked uh, backdoor flush draw is uh, probably not the hand that you want to call here. But I'm still happy that uh, our overbet worked. Let's check out the frequencies. Oh, uh, almost 100% overbets. And again, we almost always make him fold uh, bear uh, queen x hands and hands like 10-9 uh, for example, so this overbet I really like. Here we limped again and we get a very dynamic board, uh, a lot of gut shots, uh, a lot of open-ended straight draws, uh, flush draw. I don't like betting here, I think we should check. Yes, checking is the best option, and do we want to pot bet this ace turn? Well, if our opponent is good, then we can't make him fold anything, so I prefer checking again. Obviously, we are choosing between pot bet and check, we never have pot bet here. And yeah, checking is good. It is very interesting to me if the program would recommend us uh, to use uh, these overbets as aggressively as uh, here in the spots like um, like a big blind against button or a big blind against cutoff or a small blind against cutoff. I mean spots where the ranges are not as wide and the pot is um, uh, bigger. But this we will find out next Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday because I am streaming today, I am streaming tomorrow, but I am definitely making another video on this program. Uh, people don't like to watch um, a long videos, uh, so I am going to end uh, this one. But yeah, we will uh, try another spot. I think we will try every spot that this uh, program offers. Yeah, we will definitely touch on every spot. And I am sure it's going to be uh, fun and interesting. So if you enjoyed this video, please like uh, it and share it with your friends. And if you want to buy this program with a 10% discount, follow the link below. Also out there you can contact uh, support group uh, and ask everything you want to know about this uh, program. Thank you and goodbye.